Good morning and welcome to today's morning service. It's a privilege to be the one that is bringing this service to you this morning. What a joy to be to start the day in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord has said that we come to him. We come to him just as we are. We come to him when we are heavily laden so that he can give us rest. And that is the way we need to begin our day. So let us commit our session into God's hands. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of a new day. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness in our lives. Thank you for every presence, Lord, that you that we can that we have of you, O oh God. Father, we thank you for giving us a new day. And Lord, we want to begin our morning service and we invite you into our, into, into our midst. Father, you say that when two or three are gathered, you will be in their midst. And so, Lord, this morning we are gathering in your name just to come and commune with you, Lord, to come and fellowship virtually, Lord, and, and with you physically, O oh God. For we know, Lord, you are here. You are here with us, O oh Lord. And so, Father, we pray that you take over. And Father, we commit the entire day into your hands, Lord God. We, uh, we pray, Lord, that you will be with us and watch over us. We speak your blessing. We speak your, your blessing, Lord, into our day. May you be with us, Lord. We honor you, Lord, and be with us as we begin, Lord. Our hearts are open to hear from you. And so, Lord, we pray that you will speak to our hearts. Our ears are open, Lord. May we hear from you, Lord. Our eyes on to see you, Jesus. Lord, may you be with us. We thank you, Lord, and we honor you. Be glorified. Be glorified, O oh God. Father, this morning, I know that people are following, watching, and listening, Lord. Some are heavily laden, Lord. I pray, Lord, that indeed they will find rest. As they hear your word, Lord, every encounter with you makes a difference in our lives. And I pray, Lord, that even as we commit ourselves, Lord, even as we come to you, Lord, in prayer this morning, that people's lives will be transformed. Our lives will be transformed, Lord, because you are going to speak to our situations. Those that are in mourning, Lord, those that are weak, you are going to be their strength. Those that are heavily laden, they are coming to exchange their yoke with your yoke, which is light, O oh God. We thank you that you're going to give us rest today. We thank you that you're going to experience breakthrough, Lord, today. Father, we honor you and we praise your name in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, Genesis 1, 28 says, Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Now, the very first commandment that God gave to man is to be fruitful. To be fruitful, to multiply, and to take dominion. That is the very first commandment that our God gave unto us. He gave us mandate to be fruitful, to multiply, and to have dominion over every creature that he created. Now, God also wanted Abraham to, to have many children. He did not just want, want to have one person made in his image. He wanted many of his image bearers. That is why he wanted Abraham to multiply and to be fruitful. When we talk about fruitfulness, we have just fruitfulness and we have overflowing fruitfulness. When Sarah prayed, when now, uh, Hannah prayed for a son. He pray, she prayed for just one son. But God gave her overflowing fruitfulness. God answered her prayer by giving her so many sons. Now today, I want us to go before God and just ask him to give us this overflowing fruitfulness. We want to, to be fruitful. We want to be productive. Fruitfulness is the fact of just producing many uh, useful results. Fruitfulness means to be useful, to be productive, to make an impact, to be felt. That is what we are going to pray today. Now, a fruitful activity is that activity that multiplies and it adds to what is already there. It produces more of something. May God make us more and more productive in our days. May God make us more and more useful everywhere that we go. May He make May he make us experience this kind of overflowing fruitfulness, just as he did for Hannah when she prayed to have one son. So we need to desire, we need to ask God, we need to pray that 
he makes us to multiply to be useful to make an impact not to be ignored not to be irrelevant but we need to make an impact and to be relevant in whichever sp uh, spaces that we are now according to scripture fruitfulness is not just to benefit the individual alone fruitfulness benefits benefits those that are around you it uh, your fruitfulness benefits your family it benefits uh, those that you serve with those that you are in ministry with your neighbors your friends so mark chapter 11 verse 12 says that uh, this is the story of the true uh, the true vine huh? now the next day as they were leaving bethany jesus was hungry and seeing in a distance a fig tree in leaf he went to find out if it had any fruit when he reached it he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs then he said to the tree may no one ever eat fruit from you again and his disciples heard him now here we are being told that jesus is hungry and he's walking with his disciples and he sees a nice tree leaves and he moves close he's attracted the leaves are, are looking good and green and then he's attracted to it he knows that uh, you know there must be fruit there to eat but when it gets closer there are no fruits on the tree so jesus curses the tree now the, we we are learning something here that these branches the leaves they are uh, they are so appealing and they are appealing and uh, just at looking at it, you imagine that there is something on it that is useful. But moving closer, there is actually nothing. But the explanation is that from this portion of scripture that we have just read, that this tree does not have fruit because it is not the season. So maybe during their, uh, their good season, the fig tree will have fruit. It will have the figs that are partaken by Jesus and the rest of the people. But we are told that it is not the season for fruit. So that is why Jesus does not find a fruit on the tree. But now, why does Jesus curse the tree and yet it is not the season? So the explanation can be quite understandable. As human beings, you can imagine maybe it, is not, it has not rained, that is why there is no food. So there is always an explanation. But according to this scripture, that could just be an excuse. So we are learning that we need to be fruitful, we need to be useful, we need to be productive, and it does not matter the season. So we need to always add value where we are. We have not been created to just exist to be seen, just like this tree. The tree is from a distance, it appears nice it's, uh, when you look at. That is not who we are meant to be. Just by appearance we are attractive and we look good. No, we need to be useful. We need to take dominion, we need to multiply and be fruitful and make an impact. So Mark 11, the same portion of scripture, but chapter, I mean verse 20 to 21, the, the Bible says that the next morning when they passed there, Peter saw that the, the tree had withered. The tree that Jesus had cast, it had withered. Now, what is this telling us? We are learning that when you're not useful and then you die, you're not needed anymore. So we have to always make an impact where we are. We need to be productive. We need to touch lives. We need to make an impact. Now, I want you to pray for yourself. Today, uh, we are going to pray to be fruitful in our families. We, we are going to pray to be fruitful in, our, in the marketplace. And even as believers, as followers of Jesus Christ. So as we pray for fruitfulness in our family relationships, pray also to be fruitful in your other relationships, like friends, in the rest of the people that surround you. And so can you pray for yourself that you'll be fruitful? Maybe you're a parent, maybe you're a spouse, a wife or a husband, that you will, uh, maybe you're a son, you're a daughter. So you need to be fruitful. You need to be useful in that family. So can you pray for yourself that as a son or a daughter, you will be useful. As a spouse, you'll be useful. Father, we are grateful to you. We are grateful to you, Lord Jesus, for this for this commandment that we, we need to bear fruit, Lord, that we need to multiply. That is what you desire of us. Father, we thank you that you desire that we will not just be seen, we will not just sit there, Lord, and be seen, but we shall indeed bear fruit, 
fruit that will touch other people, fruit that will create an impact that others will benefit from. Father, we thank you because you always want good of us, Lord. So, Lord, thank you that you have made us parents to mentors and even to younger generation that are in our lives, Lord. We thank you that you have brought them our way so that we can walk with them, Lord, in their growth, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. May you help us that we will live for you even as we represent you to the lives of the young ones. Help us, dear Lord, that we will be good role models even as we lead by example. Help us to train them in the way that they should go so that when they are grown up, they do not depart from it, O oh Lord. Father, that they will never depart from your ways, Lord God. Help us, Lord, that we will be able to balance all the roles, O oh Lord, that we will balance all the roles, even as parents, that we will balance roles. We will not be absentees in our children's lives, O oh Lord, but we will always, we will always be present, Lord, and playing our roles well. Father, we come against any spirit of absentee parents, Lord, deadbeat fathers and mothers. Father, we cancel that spirit. You have told us in your word, Lord, that if anyone does not provide for his relatives, especially members of their household, they are like the non-believers, oh God, and that they have denied the faith. Lord, we don't want to be found like as those that have denied the faith. And so, Father, we pray that you will enable us, Lord, financially to provide for the members of our families, that you will enable us, oh God, physically to be present, that will enable us, Lord, to be there even emotionally, Lord God, that we shall be present in the lives of the young people that you have entrusted unto us, O oh Lord. And Lord, I commit the fathers into your hands, Lord, that apart from being providers and protectors, they will also take up their roles as the priests, Lord, that they will introduce the younger people, Lord, unto you, that they will not leave them to, to get lost all in, the, in the patterns of the world, but they will... Help them, Lord, that they will connect them with you, O oh Lord. Father, we cancel any spirit, O oh Lord, of parents deserting families, of children being thrown all over the place, of being neglected, Lord. Because, Lord, you are enabling us, Lord. You are helping us, dear Lord. We want to be found as people who are faithful. We want to be found, O oh Lord, as parents who are raising children, uh, in the way that they should go so that when they are adults they do not depart from it oh lord and lord this morning i commit any parent who is raising a child who is not biologically theirs lord i pray for more grace i pray for more shalom oh god over them i pray lord god that you will bind them with cords of love that shall never be broken i pray that they will bond oh god that they will gel in the name of jesus that there will not be any difference between those that are theirs and those that are not father we speak a blessing over such a family lord god may you remember them may they never lack anything oh lord provide everything lord that they will need to bring up these children father may you teach them the kind of love that you have shown unto us lord the kind of love that is so unconditional help them lord that they will create a strong love and a bond, Lord, for these children in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray, help parents, Lord, to exercise the kind of compassion that you have shown us, Lord, as our Father. Lord, I pray, help us, Lord, that as the word says, that we will not be kind of parents that provoke the younger generation, but we shall guide them in wisdom, Lord, that we shall leave a mark, as you have said, Lord, that a good father leaves a legacy lord leaves a legacy for the generations father may you enable us to be that kind of parents to be those kind of parents lord that we will create that impact in the lives of those that we raise in the name of jesus and lord i pray for anyone that is a son anyone that is a daughter of god and is watching and is following me lord god i pray in the name of jesus that lord Help them, Lord, that they will cultivate the spirit of obedience. The spirit of obedience, Lord. The spirit of respect, Lord God. Help our children that as they do this, they will reap the blessings that come with obedience. Help them, Lord, that as they reap the blessings that come with obedience, they will be productive. They will thrive, Lord. They will thrive in their schools, in their academics. They will thrive, Lord, in the talents that you have given unto them, O oh God. 
and even in ministry lord they will choose you they will choose you lord at a young age lord they will choose you over the desires of the flesh dear lord and that father you are calling them unto yourself lord and turning their lives around dear lord i pray in the name of jesus as they hear instructions from their parents lord may they always always be productive remove laziness lord remove conformity to the worldly passions for we know lord that the enemy has come to kill to steal and to destroy them but lord we are grateful we are so grateful that you came that we may have life and have it in abundance lord i thank you that these children are going to have a life of productivity a life that makes them useful lord useful in the surrounding useful oh god even in in the kingdom in the name of Jesus father may they be useful may they be productive with their talents that you have given them lord academically lord and in morals and even in character lord in the name of Jesus may they be fruitful may our children always bring joy may they never cause their parents to mourn oh lord in the name of the lord may they always be a source of joy to their parents to the society but never bring tears lord never bring anguish never bring stress to their parents lord father we thanks we pray that you may protect them protect them from the schemes of the enemy lord help them lord at at their very young age they will always even draw souls to you lord they will be, because they will be an example lord to the others they will be role models lord god to other people in the name in the name of jesus father we thank you lord and i also pray for marriages i pray for those that are married lord father i pray for men in marriage I pray in the name of Jesus that Lord you will help them you have called them Lord to love their wives just as you have loved the church and Lord I pray that their wives will benefit Lord from this love that the men are bringing and the wives will be able to submit to the men oh Lord that are in their lives help their spouses Lord that they will work on their relationships Lord help them Lord that Lord even as they work on their relationships the marriages will thrive and they will bear fruit lord remove selfishness lord remove pride remove resentment and bring love lord and teach them communication with each other teach them mercy lord teach them the patience that you have help us lord that they will also heal the wounds wounds lord wounds of divorce and separation lord father we know that that is not a, an option and so father i pray that you will mend this kind of marriages that are on the verge of separation lord or even divorce Father may you heal those wounds Lord and speak forgiveness and even grace and mercy Lord God in the name of the Lord Jesus help one Lord help the men that they will be useful husbands Lord and even the wives Lord that they will be useful wives to their men in the name of the Lord Jesus whether there's a reason Lord whatever reason or season Lord I pray that we shall continue to be fruitful just as you have taught us we will continue Lord to be useful Lord in our homes and to the people that we interact with father we are trusting you lord that lord you are the kind of god that answers you are the kind of god that is able and if there is any couple lord that are waiting on you trusting in you lord for the fruit of the womb my lord and my god i pray may you remember them lord father hannah prayed and you answered her lord sarah prayed lord and you answered her jehovah and so lord it doesn't matter the age but lord you are able to may you do it for such a couple may you bless them lord with the fruit of the womb make them fruitful lord that they will they will have children just as you did lord in the old testament lord because you are the same god yesterday today and forevermore you did miracles then and you still do miracles now and so father we speak a blessing over such a couple in jesus name lord we thank you thank you lord thank you jesus uh now as believers as followers of Jesus Jesus says that as his disciples we need to be fruitful we need to be fruitful John chapter 15 verse 1 to 8 the story of the true vine uh, we already spoke a little bit about it but now we will read 1 to 8 it says i am the true vine and my father is the gardener he cuts off every branch of mine that does that doesn't produce fruit and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more you have already been pruned and 
purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and with us such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. Let me just repeat verse 8. It says, when you produce much fruit, you are my, dis my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. So Jesus is saying that as his followers, as his disciples, we should, we should bear fruit. Not just fruit, but much fruit. And this, he says that it brings glory to the Father. So fruit here, it means inherent reproduction. Every fruit has seeds within it. And these seeds, they are meant to, to reproduce even more fruit. So that is what Jesus is talking about. He says that we need to produce fruit by abiding in him. So how do we produce fruit? Jesus is telling us the secret, that we will produce fruit when we abide in him. And it is not just us to abide in him. He has said that as we abide in him, he is also abiding in us. Some portions of scripture uh, talk about remaining in him. So we will produce fruit when we remain in Jesus. And as we remain in him, he has promised that he is also going to remain in us. So uh, this portion of scripture says that without Jesus, we can do nothing. Without Jesus, we as his disciples, we are not going to be fruitful. So as a branch, a branch meaning us, so our union with him, our union as believers with Jesus is what makes us productive. Our union with him is what makes us fruitful. But once the union is broken, once we wander away, the nutrition will cease to flow. The nutrition that we are getting from, from him as our master will be cut off. And that means that we will die. Because Jesus has warned in the same portion of scripture that uh, failing to abide, it means that our life will fail. So a branch only has life as long as it is connected to the stock of the vine. And a disciple, you and I, spiritually lives as they are connected to the master. So the secret of being fruitful for you and I as a believer and as a disciple of Jesus Christ, as his follower, is to be totally submitted to him. So you and I are disciples. We need to be totally submitted to him. In Galatians 2.20, Paul says, It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Now that indicates how totally submitted he is to Christ. That he, he doesn't look like he exists. He does not look at himself as he exists. But it is Christ who exists in him. That is why he is able to be as productive as he was. When you read the New Testament, you will see the works that, uh, that the Apostle Paul did. He was able to do that because of Christ who lived in him. On his own, he could not have done that. Now Paul says again in Philippians 4.13, he says that I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Now again, that just confirms that when you are in him, when you remain in him, you will have that strength. He is going to give you that strength, the strength to be productive because you will cease to exist. But Christ that lives in you takes over and everything just happens. So now I want you to pray for yourself that no matter the circumstances, you will remain totally submitted to God, totally and completely submitted to God as his follower, that you will remain fruitful, a fruitful Christian, reaching out to non-believers and spreading the word and using your gifts and your talents to win souls for the kingdom, using your talents using whatever you have in your hand in the kingdom of God. So can you pray for yourself? Lord Jesus, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. I worship you today. I honor you, Lord. I exalt you. Thank you, Jesus, for making us disciples. Thank you, Lord, for calling us your own. Thank you for loving us when we did not know you. Thank you, Lord, that you have called us to abide in you, that you are available for us to abide, abide to remain in you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for being so available, Lord. We are grateful for the promise of fruitfulness when we remain in you, Lord. So, Father, I pray that you help us as believers, that we will bear much fruit for and in the kingdom so that our God is glorified, fruit that will benefit others that are around us. As believers, Lord God, our mandate is to win souls, is to evangelize, Lord, is to spread the word. And so, Father, I pray that you will give us the courage, Lord. You will give us that courage to spread the word to the, those that are unreached, Lord. That you will give us the courage, Lord, the strength, even as we continue to abide in you, O oh Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will help us to be faithful laborers, to be faithful servants, Lord, in your vineyard. That, Lord, we will bring plenty at harvest time equip us well lord for this equip us lord that at harvest time we will bring in plenty lord to your kingdom in the name of the lord jesus help us lord to identify every gift and every talent that you have given unto us and even as we identify lord help us that these ones will be used used in your kingdom through our talents lord may your light shine may your light shine lord in the darkness may your light shine lord and bring glory and honor to your name may everything that you have put in us lord become a blessing a blessing to others lord may it be a source of joy to the hearts of others and even draw others unto you lord in the name of jesus you said in your word lord that by our love other people will know our love for one another the world will know that we are Christians. The world will know, Lord, that we belong to you, Lord Jesus. And so, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, help us that we will demonstrate this kind of love for each other so that others will know that we belong to you, so that others will come to you, Lord, so that others will be drawn, will be drawn unto you, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray and this fruit of the Spirit will be evident that others will indeed, they will indeed come to you they will know, Lord, that you have deposited it in us. So, Lord, that they may come to you, Lord Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus that there will be evidence. Evidence, Lord, of the spirit that lives in us, Lord. As you have told us that you live in us, Lord. I pray, Lord, that there will be evidence. We will not just be seen, Lord, but, Father, we will be effective. We will be productive, Lord. We will be useful in the kingdom. We will not just sit pretty, Lord, and be seen, but, Father, we will be useful. And so, Lord, here we are. Here I am, Lord. Father, may you use us. Use us, Lord, in your kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit that you have given unto us, may he take away any form of flesh, O oh God, any form of unbelief, any form of doubt, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, and replace with faith, Lord, any form of competition, unhealthy competition, murmuring, Lord, spite, unforgiveness, Lord, and anything else that does that, that hinders fruitfulness from us, Lord, I pray. May the Holy Spirit come and remove. Come and remove, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, this morning I also remember the Praise Chapel family, Lord. Each and every member of the Praise Chapel family, I commit them into your hands, Lord. I pray, Lord, that none of us, Lord, none of us will be use, useless, Lord. Father, may we all be useful. May we all, Lord, be useful wherever we are, oh God, and in your kingdom, starting with our pastors, Lord, and the entire congregation, including our children, dear Lord, help us that we will find our place, Lord, in the spaces that we are we are in. May we become a blessing even to the Praise Chapel ministry, Lord God. May we never, Lord, be found to cause confusion and trouble. But Lord, I pray, even in hard times, Lord, we will be people that bring solutions. Even in times of uncertainty, Lord, we will be people that will bring sense, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, help each member that we will be builders and not destroyers, Lord. Help us, Lord. Teach us, O oh Lord, to be like you always in the name of the Lord Jesus. That even to the to our spiritual father, Lord, I pray that you will help us. We will be like the Aaron and the Ah in his life, oh God. We will hold him, not bring him down, but hold him up, dear Lord, and just support. So, Lord, I pray, may you help us as the Praise Chapel family, never to be found, Lord, useless and unproductive. But, Lord, I pray that we shall be useful. 
Help, Lord, help us, Lord, that the entire congregation, we will be people who are totally and totally submitted unto you, always abiding in you, Lord, and always bearing fruit in and out of season, so that your name is glorified in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, Jesus has said that we need to be ready for his return. But being ready does not mean that we stop living. The Bible says that occupy until I come. To occupy is to do something. It's not just to sit there and wait. So we are involved in other activities, in the marketplace, in your workplace, in your business. Maybe you are an employee, maybe you are an employer, or you're running your own business. You still need to be fruitful. You still need to be useful. You need to be relevant. You need to, create, to make an impact. What are you doing with the knowledge that you have in the time that you have, and even your money, and even your abilities? When you're supposed to do something and you don't do, that is what is called the sin of omission. So the sin of omission is also just as dangerous as the sins of commission. Sins of commission is when what, what we do when we do the wrong thing. Now, out in the marketplace, you also need to be fruitful. How are you using what God has given you in the marketplace? Are you a blessing? Are you, are you useful? Are you making an impact? Are you relevant? The parable of the talents, which is found in Matthew 25, you can read that for yourself. I'll just try and paraphrase in the interest of time. So it is in Matthew 25, 14 to 30. The parable of the talents, we encounter um, a master who has three servants. And this master wants to go on a journey and he needs to leave his treasure safe somewhere. He doesn't take to the bank, but he decides he's going to give to his three of his servants. So the first servant, he's given five talents. And he, uh, when the master comes back, in the report he gives is that he traded with the five talents and gained five more. So he hands over to the master ten, ten talents. And the master is really impressed. He is greatly impressed. And this is how he responds. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. That is the response. In the second one, is given two talents. And when the master comes back, he has traded, traded with the two talents and he's, uh, he's brought in two more. The master is really impressed again. And he gives the same response as he did for the first one. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And the third one is given one talent. And this one... He says this, that uh, he hid the talent, he hid it to the ground, he went and buried, dug somewhere and hid it. Now that when the master came back, he returns that one talent uh, with insults to the master. He says that uh, the master is a hard man who reaps where he has not sown, who also gathers where he has not scattered. So he just brought back what belonged to the master, that one talent that belonged to the master. But you see, at least he realized that that talent was not his. So he took it back just as it was. And with this, and with this, the master is not impressed at all. So he judged him quite harshly. He took the talent and gave it to the first servant, the one that had brought in more. Now, uh, we are told in this scripture that he distributed them according to their ability. So he realized that these three servants had different abilities. So that is why he distributed five, two, and one. But the master is not impressed when the, the third uh, servant does not do anything with what he is given. So the, the, script, the master responds that for, after he takes the talent and gives to the first one, he says, for to everyone who has more, more will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even that which he has is taken away. That is quite sad. Now, the profitable servant, the unprofitable servant, the unproductive one, he is actually cast out in darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is quite sad. The first and the second servants, they have displayed goodness. That is what the, that is what the servant said, the master said. They have displayed goodness, they have displayed faithfulness. And they did their work 
promptly, perseverance, and, and actually they did it successfully. That is why we can see that there is a harvest, there's something that they have brought. They have been productive with what they were given. Now for this, they have they received praise, they have they received reward, a reward with a promise for future blessing. They received glory when the master said, enter into the joy of the Lord. But for the third servant, he came and he made excuses. He did not even work. He didn't even try to. He gave excuses for being unproductive. So when we talked about the tree, the, the fig tree, remember, there is no excuse for being productive because it is God who, who, who helps you when you abide. So the seasons should not matter. Now this one, he has his own excuses that the master reads where he does not so and, uh, and all that, all that he has said. So the master is quite not happy, not impressed, and he is judged harshly for doing nothing with what he has been given. He has been entrusted with something and he does nothing with it. So he's termed as, as lazy, he's termed as wicked, and he's not enterprising. So he's, he loses even the little that he has. Now, what is that telling us? That we, it doesn't matter the quantity of what you have. What matters is what you do to it. So being enterprising, being creative, that is something that you ask of God. You ask from God when you abide. To abide means that you have a relationship with the Father. When you remain in Him, you have, that, you have built that relationship as His child. So you can ask of Him anything and it will be done, just as He has said to us in the portion of Scripture. So in the marketplace, we need to be like the first and the second servants. That whatever you have, use it to be productive. Ask the master to help you so that you are productive. Uh, character is who you are when you are alone. Character is what you do when you are alone, when no one is watching. So in your workplace, are you the kind of person that looks where the boss is looking so that you, you want to work? When someone is standing behind you, that is when you are able to work. That is not being a good steward. That is not being a good Christian, a good disciple of Christ. So we need to do something in order to be productive. You see, when you are the kind of servant, like the third one, when there is redundancy, this will be the first person to go because they are not needed. They are not useful to the organization. So pray for yourself that God will help you to be, to be profitable. God will help you to be creative. God will help you. Even those that are in school, what are you doing with what you have? What are you doing with it? Ask the Father to help you. Father, we thank you. Thank you for reminding us that we need to be productive, that we need to use what you have given unto us, that it doesn't matter how small or how big, but whatever that is in our hands, Lord, when we use it, Lord, with you, with your help, Lord, because you are the one that enables us, it will be able to multiply. It will be able, Lord, to to grow, oh Lord, and to make an impact. And so, Lord, we, we thank you for this reminder, Lord. Thank you that you will be found. That uh, Thank you, Lord, that when we do this, Lord, and you are with us, we will be found to be good stewards. We will be found, Lord, to be useful, even with the abilities that you have given unto us. We will use them, Lord, to produce more, to produce more, Lord, for the kingdom. Lord, I pray. That may you help us, help us, Lord, to make an impact. Help us, Lord God, that we will make an impact as an employee, Lord, as an employer, and even for those that are running their own businesses, Lord. Lord, I thank you for all those areas that you have placed, placed them, Lord. Even those that are still studying, Lord, I thank you for where they are at the moment. I pray, Lord, that we will be found to be faithful stewards, that we will display your goodness, Lord, just as these servants, Lord. We will display faithfulness, Lord, just as the first and the second servant, Lord, so that your name is glorified. Lord, I pray that we will not be like the third servant, being lazy and wicked and being thrown out, Lord, in darkness. But Lord, I pray that we will be found to be useful. When people are being laid off, Lord, for being unneeded, un un not needed, may we be needed, Lord, where we serve. May we make an impact in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that we will be like you, Lord, in those places, that we will be able to even de demonstrate love. We pray, Lord, for 
those that are serving as employees, remind them, Lord, that character is who they are when no one is watching, that they obey their employers, they are acting in obedience to your word, Lord. Help them that they will be able to do that, Lord, for the glory and honor of the name. And Lord, they need to work unto you, not unto themselves and not unto the boss, but Lord, unto you, Jesus. Help them, Lord, that this employed person will be like the first and the second servant. They will be enterprising and diligent, Lord, in their endeavors. That, Lord, with the little that they, will, they are given, they will remain faithful. They will remain uh, productive, Lord God. Lord, may they always add value. May they always add value, Lord God, where they are. When the others are being laid off, Lord, because they add value to the organizations, Lord, I pray that, Lord God, they will remain firm, they will remain standing, Lord. They will remain needed. I pray, Lord, that whenever they are absent, their absence will be felt. Their absence will be felt, Lord in Jesus name because Lord they will represent you because they will be fruitful because they are looking unto you Lord Jesus because Lord they are with you and with you all things are possible Lord God because Lord they have remained in you Lord God and you are in them and so Father I also pray for those that have employed others may you also help them that they will abide in you Lord they will remain in you Lord and even as they do that they will be fruitful they will be fruitful Lord God Lord Remind them, Lord God, that even them, Lord, their characters, that they will draw their character from you, Lord. They will draw, Lord, their strength from you, Lord Jesus. Even with the interactions with the people below them, Lord, they will sow your love. They will sow grace, Lord. They will extend grace, Lord, and even patience and kindness. It will be evident, Lord, because they have, they are abiding in you. Father, I pray that they will be like that fig tree, that fig tree that you have taught us about and that they will bear fruit in and out of season in the name of Jesus. And all this, Lord, so that your name is glorified. I, Lord, I also pray for this one who's running their own business. I pray in the name of Jesus that, Father, they will not bow to corruption, Lord. They will not bow, Lord, to, the, to what is happening around, Lord Jesus. But, Father, they will find courage to say no to ungodly dealings, Lord. Let them be the light, Lord, like that light on a hill, Lord, that is shining its light in darkness, Lord, in the darkness of corruption. Shining their light, Lord, in the darkness where there is malice and arrogance, Lord God. Lord, I pray that, Father, you will help these ones, Lord, that they will not touch what is not theirs, but they'll continue to bear fruit in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. Remove the spirit of insufficiency, Lord. The spirit of insignificant, Lord God, from your people. Where they are not needed, I pray. Make them relevant. Make them relevant. And Lord, today, I pray for this one person, Lord, that has that thinks, Lord, they have done everything. They have worked hard and they have prayed, Lord. They have remained in you, Lord, but things are not working. They remain to not to make profits, but losses. They remain to be unproductive, Lord. They feel that they have stagnated, dear Lord. Father, I pray for this kind of a person. I pray in the name of Jesus. You are, you are the one that said that, Lord, you bless the work of our hands. May you bless the work, O oh God. Bless the work of their hands, Lord God. May whatever they, they touch prosper, Lord God. May they overflow, Lord God, in fruitfulness, just as you did for Job. May they overflow, Lord God, in fruitfulness, just as you did for Hannah, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Someone is at, is at crossroads and they don't even know which way to go. They want to make decisions. They do not know what to do, Lord. Show them, Lord. Show them which way to go, Lord. Remind them, Lord, that giving up is never an option. Remind them, Lord God, that with you all things are possible, Lord. Remind them, Lord, that they can start again, Lord God. They can begin again and they can get it right this time. Teach them, Lord, that uh, Lord, they need to learn from their experiences. The experiences that they, they, they have had in the past, Lord, the bad and the good experiences will be like learning lessons, Lord, that, Father, they will grow again. May you give them resources. Walk with them, Lord, and give them people to walk with them in the journey of growth and fruitfulness. Lord, I pray that my viewer and my listener will have a fruitful day today, O oh God. No one will be unproductive today. May you bless the work of their hands, Lord. Cause them to prosper and multiply. May they multiply, Lord, whatever they touch, O oh Lord, may it be multiplied. Father, 
Help us, Lord, that we will overflow with fruitfulness in our families. We will overflow, Lord, with fruitfulness, Lord, in our relationships, Lord, in our workplaces, Lord God, I pray that we will overflow with fruitfulness. Even as believers in ministry and in areas that you have called us to serve, Lord God, may we overflow, Lord, with fruitfulness, Lord, touching lives and impacting others in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, may we be found to be good and faithful servants. May we be found to be faithful, Lord, in the few things, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will also, just as you've said, Lord, to the first and the second servants, that you'll also make us rulers of many things, even as we are faithful in little things. May you make us, make, make us, Lord, rulers, rulers of many things here on earth, Lord, and in the life to come. Father, we thank you, Jesus, for you are doing a new thing, Lord. Then, Father, those that have followed me, Lord, and those that we have prayed with, dear Lord, you are making them fruitful, Lord. You are multiplying what they touch, dear Lord. And that, Father, their hands will not be empty, but you're blessing the work of their hands, Lord. And that, Father, they will be a blessing to those that are around them. They will touch lives, O oh Lord. Help them, Lord, that they will never wander away from you, but they will continually and continually abide in you, Lord. Because, Lord, you are our source. You are our source, O oh God. Father, we thank you and we glorify your name. Amen. Amen. Now, we have come to the end of our morning session. I want to invite you to worship uh, with your giving. Our pay bill number for m is 842050 and, uh, and it's running on your screen. So you can give your tithe and you can give your offering and the Lord will bless you. I also want to invite you into church uh, this evening. We have turning point service which begins at 5.30 p.m. And on Sundays we have two services. One is, uh, the first one begins at 7.30 and the second service begins at 9.30. And we are located along General Mazenge Road, right next to Mamangina Girls High School, and we are opposite Aga Khan Hospital. So I welcome to our church, welcome to worship with us. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.